Stuart Major Beam Engine Rebuild and this is part 32, fitting the base and making the mounting studs. I never thought there were going to be this many episodes and I hope my lifespan is long enough to complete it. This episode starts off with me drilling a pilot hole through the baseboard into the brick covered part which supports the engine. And once the pilot hole has been drilled I'm going to use a brass screw to secure the main baseboard to the part that the engine sits on. It's time now to screw in the brass screw, and I really should have drunk my cup of tea first which is now going cold, but never mind. So I'm screwing it in with a screwdriver, trying to do the authentic thing, and I thought to myself, no, 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 no. This is of course the 21st century, so it's possibly a good idea to use a power tool. So here I am using my trusty drill, piloting the holes and screwing in the brass screws. Far easier than using a screwdriver. It's time for a machining festival. These are some 2BA bolts that I bought a while back. Slot-headed 2BA bolts to be exact, and I put these in the chuck of my smaller of the two lathes that I have, which is a little Boxford AUD, and I just machine off the heads like this. I don't bother chopping the head off square with a parting tool or anything, because these small pieces will just get lost in the bottom of the hole anyway. These are going to become the studs that hold the engine down onto the brick-covered plinth, I'll let this machining operation run for a while so that people who get off on engineering can see a lathe turning. That's a chuck. That's a cutting tool. Note to self, stop being sarcastic on the videos. However, there are 12 of these to make and it really is very boring doing it, but it's not too bad watching it back. It's not as boring as actually doing the job. I do not like repetition. Even repetition like this, it's repetitive. I've now lost count of how many of these I've done but it must be nearly there. I'm sure the last one will go horrendously wrong. I'll drop it on the floor and never find it again. I don't know how it translates in other countries, but in England this is called Sod's Law. What Sod's Law generally means is the last part of the operation, the last nut and bolt you put together, everything goes wrong. But thankfully, not in this case, I now have 12 studs all ready to mount to the base. I'm going to push them around on the baseboard and engage smug mode. There are several different ways of mounting engines to baseboards. You can use wood screws, they look really bad. You can use studs like this that actually go into the wood and then the engine sits on top of the studs. The problem with this engine is because the studs are going to be going into the wood, they're not likely to be perfectly aligned. And as this engine is very heavy, I just do not want to hover it over the studs and run the risk of damaging the top of the studs, so I'm going to do it in a really weird way. First of all, as you've just seen, I've been tapping the holes 2BA and now, as I've described before in other videos, using some Loctite 603, I'm going to turn these studs into bolts. Here I am applying the Loctite 603, then I put the nut in place and screw it down just the right amount so there's a little bit of thread protruding and I make 12 of these. And they look very neat and they're all absolutely identical. The nuts are more or less in the same place. When you put them on the engine, with washers, they look really good. And by using a socket from your socket set, they are very easy to fit, and remove for that matter. There is of course one obvious disadvantage that the studs are down into wood, so that if you were to be too heavy handed, you would strip the thread in the wood. So my recommendation is do not be too heavy handed. And what I'm doing here is removing all the studs. The reason for fitting the studs in the first place like this is just to make sure they fit and they go down into the holes. I do know that all these holes are much longer than they need to be, which is a good thing. And by screwing in all the studs in advance to hold the bed plate down onto the base, I also know that the stud holes are in the correct place. So now I've removed the engine completely from the mounting base again and put it on one side. And what I'm going to use is some of this stuff. This is cyanoacrylate adhesive or CA glue or super glue, and I'm running some of this, about seven drops to be exact, down into each hole. And what this will do, it will soak into the wood and it will harden the threads in there. This system of hardening wooden threads is not ideal, and I must admit that, but for an exhibition style engine, it's pretty good really, it's a lot simpler. It makes the engine very quick to remove from the bed plate, and provided that you're not heavy handed when you tighten down the studs, everything will be fine. I would like to say at this stage that I am also aware of alternative methods of fastening studding into wood. What I could do is drill the holes much bigger, thread them and put big brass inserts that are threaded 2BA and that would be really substantial. 
and a little over the top, and as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I'm getting seriously worried that my lifespan is not going to make it to the end. I've temporarily put the engine back on the bed plate, it's the safest place for it. Those of you who are observant will notice that on the right hand side of the picture there is a very old 1960s style tin robot clinging to the shelf. I actually have two of these. One of them is in mint condition and this one definitely isn't. So it clings to the shelf sometimes. And it gives me someone to talk to now and again. Thanks for watching, I hope you found it useful.